You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And hello and welcome into the Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Grant McCauley and Jake Mastriani coming your way on a Friday night after what was a wild night of baseball at Great American Ballpark. Unfortunately for the Braves, they came up on the wrong side of an 11-10 to 10 score, but it was nothing if not entertaining with the two hottest teams in baseball hooking up for this weekend series. And if this is any indication of how all three of these games are going to go, I advise you to go ahead and buckle in because this was a crazy one. Before we recap this one, and of course get you set for game two, which will come your way on Saturday, I want to remind you to subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta right here on YouTube. Click the bell to get notified every time we drop a new episode. Go ahead and tell a friend if you enjoy the show. We appreciate that. It helps us grow. And you can hit that like button too, even if the Braves don't come out on the right side of the score. This was one that had an awful lot to unpack. And for baseball fans, if you were just looking for something wild and crazy, well, the Reds and Braves, they gave that to you on Friday night. Also, make sure you subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, Jake, I know that the Braves like to win uh, more nights than not, obviously. There's your first obvious statement of the day. Uh, but when you go up by five in the first inning, you feel like well, you got a pretty good shot. But this ballpark, anything but a given to grab a lead, you got to hold on to it, and you might have to grab a few more before all said and done. And the Braves found out that this Reds team that had won 11 games in a row coming in, uh, they're a pretty legitimate threat in the National League Central and beyond. Yeah, they're just a fun team right now. I mean, I hate the, the Braves had to take the brunt of this one, but I think it's you know great for baseball, great for that Cincinnati fan base over there uh, that's obviously been down for a while. But just a really fun game in general. Ellie De La Cruz put on a show. Yep. But yeah, the Braves go up 5 nothing. You kind of expect to win those games, but when you walk a lot of batters, hit a lot of batters, as you mentioned, in that ballpark, bad things are going to happen. Yeah, we always talk about it. You give teams extra outs, you give them extra base runners, and doing it in that park, you're just inviting trouble. And the Reds were happy to provide it with a slew of home runs on this night. So let's jump inside the box score because the Braves, they had a slew of home runs as well. Game number 75 of the year. Game one of three in this uh, three-game set over the weekend at Great American Ballpark against the Reds. Braves dropped to 48-27. and 27. That's 21 games over 500. They still got a nice lead in the NL East despite this loss. Ten runs on 16 hits. You like your chances with those numbers. No errors. Seven men left on base. The Reds, though, 41-35. and 35. 11 runs, so just nine hits. But as Jake mentioned, walks and hit batsmen, those came home to haunt the Atlanta Braves. One error, six men left on base for the Reds. Alex Young picks up the win in relief. Neither starter uh, really factored in this game. A.J. smith Shaver and Luke Weaver both got knocked out in the fourth inning. Young is 3-0. and Colin McHugh takes the loss, drops to 3-1 and as the Reds drop the four spot on him uh, in the fifth inning. And then Alexis Diaz closing the door for the Reds, his 21st save. Game lasted three hours and 14 minutes, but Jake, I mean, I've got a lot of stats on this page in front of me, but one of them that really caught my eye, 43,086 fans for a June game for Cincinnati. That has to feel pretty good for that team, which has certainly given their fans, as you mentioned, a lot of reasons to cheer and a lot of things to be excited about. Yeah, I mean, that's what I kind of mentioned in my open there. I just, I, I thought this was great for the, the city of Cincinnati. I hate the, the Braves had to be part of this run they're on, but to see a fan base like that that's been down for so long to have so much excitement right now, the win streak that they're on to get a packed house against a really good Braves team. I mean, this is a test for yeah. the Cincinnati team, no doubt about it. I mean, the Braves are one of the best, if not the best team in all of baseball, certainly in the National League. And it's a young team, and they believe right now. I think you're seeing that with the Marlins as well, a young team kind of coming up. They're starting to believe that they can win. You're seeing it with this Reds team. I mean, they fall behind five to nothing and come back like that. I think you got to give a lot of credit to them. And obviously that fan base being there, I'm sure, helped out a little bit. So, yeah, really energetic crowd there, really great for Cincinnati. Hopefully the Braves can come back and shut them down in the next two, though. Yeah, the headliner of this game was Ellie De La Cruz, and he's a guy that, if you've been living under a rock, I mean, welcome to the big leagues, to this 21-year-old kid who's a five-tool phenom. I mean, he has the size, the athleticism, the power, the speed, everything you could want out of a superstar-level prospect. That's what Ellie De La Cruz has brought, and that kind of, I guess, swagger and energy, whatever you want to call it, to inject that into this Reds team, because since he's come up, they're now 13-2, and two. Going on this nice long winning streak is a big part of that as well. Getting Joey Votto back off the injured list, I'm sure helped. But it was a tough night, a short night for A.J. smith Shaver, who I felt like you know really had the stuff to match up against this club. But this is a dangerous proposition, pitching in this ballpark. We saw that. I don't think he was as sharp as he wanted to be or needed to be in this one. Made some mistakes and was made to pay for those mistakes. 
Three and a third innings, just four hits, couple of walks, but five earned runs and three home runs jumped off the page and jumped out of the ballpark on A.J. smith Shaffer. And I feel like this is what, you know, it kind of happens for any young pitcher coming up, but somebody who's 21, or excuse me, 20 years old and making just his third big league start, this is going to be a challenge. And we knew this Reds team was capable of doing some damage. And in fact, they did against the young Braves starter. Yeah, you look at it, just four hits given up, but three of them leave the ballpark, and then you have the two walks and a hit batter. I mean, uh, this was one of my takeaways coming into this game on the podcast. Talked about, you know, the runs he's given up this year. He hasn't given up a ton, but the ones he has given up, it's typically been on the long ball. We even saw that in his last outing as well. So I don't know if that's something that's going to, you know, plague him or something that is a concern with him. But, yeah, I just certainly wasn't as sharp as he wants to be, especially after that first inning. I mean, you take a 5 nothing lead, and mm-hmm. then he goes 1-2-3 in the bottom of the first. I uh, felt yeah. really good about that, but uh, then just wasn't able to maintain that control. You give up, you know, three home runs. That's really tough right there. But then, again, you couple that with really the walks and the hit batters on the night really just plague the entire pitching staff. Yeah, I really I call this a baptism by fire for a young pitcher like this against a red-hot team like this with some superstars, some veterans, and just some, I think, really good at-bats is what the Reds throw on you, honestly. And in that ballpark, it's all – it's a big combustible element, you know, all piled up on top of one another. So you knew that this could catch fire, and this Reds team most certainly did that on this night. Colin McHugh, meanwhile, he had a much rougher go of it in the fifth inning. Back-to-back hit batsman to open that frame. Ellie De La Cruz added again with an RBI single. Then there was the 3-1 pitch to Joey Votto. You got to be careful with him. I can understand, you know, challenging him, trying to go after him, trying to get the out there, not trying to walk or put anybody else on base. But then again, Joey Votto kind of makes you want to play the hindsight game because he hit a very long ball, put three runs on the board, and put the Reds on top. And that is where they were staying in this game after that outburst by Votto. A couple of home runs for the veteran in this game as well. Ellie De La Cruz hitting for the cycle in his first four at-bats, justifiably is going to get a lot of headlines just in case I buried the lead. That's a thing he did in this game, but Joey Votto's presence was also felt. It was, and that was, I thought, a key turning point in that ball game. Obviously, Joey Votto hitting that big home run to give the Braves, or give the Reds the lead, rather. After L.A. De La Cruz stole second, and McHugh was already behind Votto, I thought maybe they were just going to pitch around him a little bit there and set up a possible double play to get out of that inning, but then you left a 3-1 pitch over the plate. Also, tough luck for McHugh earlier in that inning. I thought he had L.A. De La Cruz struck out. Yeah, uh, wasn't called, and then Ella De La Cruz gets a broken bat single in the center field. So just a little bit of tough luck there, but really surprised that 3-1 pitch. Not only that I thought maybe they would walk him, but obviously you left one hanging to yeah. really good hitter that's 39 years old. And, yeah, I thought that was one of the, the big keys in this game, a big turning point in that game, uh, the decision maybe to not walk Votto and then just obviously not executing that pitch. Of course. And Joey Votto looks revitalized and is coming off the injured list. He was – there for a long period of time now he just gets dropped right into a team that's really playing its best baseball probably in year well not probably definitely in Mm -hmm. years he said this is the most exciting brand of reds baseball he's ever seen after this game and i'm prone to believe him because he's seen a lot of reds baseball and this is a team that most certainly has gotten all of major league baseball's attention on this winning streak uh as you look at the rest of the reds scoring after they scored the five runs in the fourth added a couple more against ben heller in the sixth inning that had him up in a nice 11 to seven lead in this contest. But the Braves offense was also heard from in this one. The five run first inning certainly was a big one. The Reds or excuse me. The Braves also hit their fair share of home runs. Matt Olson had a go ahead home run that came in the fifth inning to put the Braves on top briefly seven to five. Of course, we just documented what happened at the bottom of that frame. That was the first of two home runs on the night for Olson though. He went back to back with Austin Riley who followed one batter after Ronald Acuna Jr. homered. All of those against their old friend Lucas Sims in the eighth inning. You felt like at least the Braves gave themselves that chance, down 11-10, to 10, but Alexis Diaz, he has been awfully good this year, and the Reds, I'm sure, are certainly glad they have somebody like that to come in and slam the door for them. Yeah, we talked about it with this offense, though. They're never really out of it. I mean, 11-7 in the eighth inning, and you hit three home runs uh, to get back within a run. I mean, that's just what this offense can do for you. I thought the home run by Travis Darno in the first inning was really big as well because it looked like maybe they might not get anything out of that or much of anything, and then uh-huh. Darno gets that big 
uh, home run right there as well. So a lot of key home runs in this game. The Braves had 16 hits. They out hit the Reds 16 to nine right. in this game. I mean, offense clearly wasn't the issue in this one, but great to see some of these bats break out. Austin Riley, a three hit game. You mentioned Olsen with two homers as well. Acuna, a three hit game in this one and another home run. So yep. again, offense, not the issue here. Every starter had a hit. Uh, great to see this offense, you know, continue to, after they blew a big lead and fell behind, still continue to come back, had a runner on base in the ninth inning until that unfortunate double play. So this offense, they're not out of any game. No, they're certainly not. And we'll talk a little bit more about the offense and go through particularly the night for Acuna, what it means statistically for him. The same thing for Matt Olson as well as I talk a little bit about the winning streaks and a little bit of the history that we saw from the Reds' young phenom. But I got to tell you about one of our great sponsors because this edition of the Braves Postcast is brought to you by FanDuel. Baseball season's in full swing, as you well know, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 that's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. You just go over to FanDuel.com slash locked on to join today. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball, and Major League Baseball trademarks are used with permission. Uh, so as we look at the Braves offense, you mentioned some of the highlights in this one. We talked a little bit about the home runs. For Ronald Lacuna Jr., number 16 on the year. He also stole his 33rd base, so he continues to trend in the direction that we all are expecting to Make a run well beyond 30-30, possibly 40-40, maybe some other big things. May not be much consolation on a night where you lose in a game like this, but I thought one of the fun aspects of this one was seeing him and seeing Ellie De La Cruz and seeing both of them kind of show out in this game. De La Cruz hitting for the cycle, first red to do that in 34 years. He's played just 15 major league games. He has made one heck of an impression on not just the Reds, but anybody that's had a chance to watch him from across baseball one of the most talented young prospects in the game, doing a lot and has gotten a lot of comparisons, Jake, to Ronald Acuna Jr. So kind of fun to see those two guys in the same ballpark, in the same game, going head to head and doing some big things, exciting things for their team. This was really exciting. I think it's two, you know, really talented players, freakish type athletes that can do just everything really well. If there's somebody who's going to have a 40-40 season, obviously we're tracking with Acuna right now and know he can. I think it's one of these two guys. I think Ellie De La Cruz is somebody that has that potential as well with his big power, 116.6 mi uh, mile per hour exit velocity tonight on his double. Oh. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Acuna, I mean, we know what he can do. I think the only surprising thing about Acuna tonight is that his home run only went 368 feet. I don't know what he's doing out there. I guess he caught it off the end of the bat, but we don't typically see him hit one that's under at least 400 feet. But again, he's just you know remarkable to get to see these two guys play against each other. I think it's uh, a lot of fun for Major League Baseball. Like I said, I hate it. the Braves had to lose this one, but I think this is a game for Major League Baseball. You want to tune in, see two of the hottest teams in baseball, two of the most exciting talents in all of baseball, and I don't think you could have asked for much more other than for Braves fans to maybe get a win. Yeah, of course, and it, what's fun is I look down my Twitter and I follow and, and know a lot of people across the game of baseball, and everybody seemed to be tuned in watching this game, and De La Cruz, he's going to bring some eyeballs to it with what he was doing once you get kind of a a cycle watch, I guess, if we want to call it, going on and doing it so quickly in the first four bets. That is also impressive, but just knowing what these two teams had done coming into this one and watching them square off, you don't usually get this kind of buzz, I feel like, for a late June game any season just about, but the Braves and Reds were able to put together something pretty exciting on a Friday night at Great American Ballpark, but as you mentioned, it was the Reds who came out on top in this one. One other play I did want to bring up, the Eddie Rosario fly ball that was Touched by a fan. It wasn't going to get out of the ballpark. Might have hit the yellow line or would have hit the yellow line. And probably, you know, it could have carried him down to the outfielders. Might have carried him away. Travis Darno had to stop at third. Uh, exchanged a few different tweets. Went back and looked at it. Maybe it changes something. Maybe it doesn't. We'll never know. It would be nice, though, if you're a fan at a ballpark, if you mm -hmm. go ahead and don't reach over the wall for balls that you think are foul or balls that you think you can catch. It, let it get over the wall. Let it get completely out of play. Then go ahead and make your catch. That is my free advice for the night. And I think that was the second time it happened in that area. I think earlier in the game, a fan tried that as well and dropped their hat over the fence. So, yeah, let's keep our hands behind the fence. Let's not have any Derek Jeter, Baltimore <laughs> Orioles home run type situations uh, like man. back in the day uh, as well. But, yeah, let's, let's keep our hands in, out, out of the field of play. Yeah, go ahead and keep all hands inside the vehicle for the duration of the ride. But again, I don't know that that would have necessarily banked on Travis Darno scoring there. It could have carried him right down to one of the outfielders. 
looking at the positioning, maybe it would have bounced away back toward the infield. We'll never know. But in a game like this, the Braves certainly, offensively speaking, did enough to win win this night. But unfortunately, from the pitching side of things, the Reds got real healthy in the middle innings and took it to A.J. smith Chauver and to Colin McHugh in particular to build up a nice lead that they did not relinquish. Uh, Braves' eight-game winning streak snapped. It did tie their longest of the season set back in April. Reds, with their current 12-game winning streak, their longest since 1957. So to say that they're on quite a run, uh, the last time this happened, Gus Bell, the grandfather of current Reds manager David Bell, was a player for the Reds. Also, Frank Robinson was playing for the Reds back then as well in just his second year in the major leagues. That is how long it has been since the Reds had a streak like this. Surprising the Big Red Machine never did it. But, hey, the the Reds in 2023 are enjoying themselves a little bit of uh, franchise history. Ron Lacuna Jr., meanwhile, does the home run and the stolen base we talked about. He also leads Major League Baseball with 66 runs scored, and he made it to 100 hits, just the third man in Major League Baseball to reach that plateau yet this year. Only Luis Arise and Bo Bichette have more in all of baseball. So Acuna, the all-star starter for the National League, who does not have to go through any more phases of voting, had himself another great night, unfortunately, in a losing effort for the Braves. And as far as the National League East is concerned, Atlanta does still have a six-game lead over the Marlins as they lost to the Pirates on Friday night as well. Let's get you set for Saturday. Game two of this series is going to be Jared Schuster, the lefty, 4-2 and two with a 4-5-7 ERA. He's going to be squaring off with right-hander Graham Ashcroft, who is just 3-5 and five with a 6.78 ERA. Jake, you look at some of the ERAs for some of these red starters, at least, you feel like the Braves can do something similar to what they did on Friday night. It's not a given, but the red starting rotation, if there is a weakness, that might be one good place to start, no pun intended. Yeah, especially with the way the offense is hitting, like I said. I mean, they're capable of slugging their way to a win, but you do have to get some good pitching, and you're throwing another rookie out there in a very hitter-friendly ballpark facing a very good lineup and a pitcher in Jared Schuster who struggled with walks this year. So could be a difficult matchup for him. Hopefully not. Hopefully he continue to do what he's done since being recalled and give the Braves, you know, a solid five innings, especially after you had to use a lot of the bullpen on Friday night. And yeah, Ashcroft ERA over six, but the guy has really good stuff. We saw him yes. earlier in the year as well. So it was surprising to me that he struggled that much, but obviously the Braves looking to end the Reds a winning streak and begin a new one for them, but going to be another tough challenge on Saturday. It definitely will be. It's going to be a tough and entertaining series, I think, between these two teams, and Friday night was a pretty good indicator of that. 4.10 p.m. Eastern time is the first pitch of Game 2 of the three-game set at Great American Ballpark. Jared Schuster for the Braves, Graham Ashcroft for the Reds. That'll wrap things up on this edition of the Braves Postcast. As always, we appreciate you riding along with us after each and every one of these Braves games that we're able to put this thing together and recap of usually a very eventful very exciting night of Braves baseball this most certainly that if you enjoy this kind of thing make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube click the bell to get notified every time we drop a new episode and subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast once again the Braves come up short in a crazy night of baseball up in Cincinnati 11 to 10 the Reds take it we'll be back with you soon for Jake Mastriani I'm Grant McCauley we will catch you next time so long everyone <laughs>